Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Saturday, the 4th of February 2023. And today's Mill News, today was match day. Big match day, sold out match day. And the result was we drew 1-1. Not the best of results, uh, especially considering the way we played, which is pretty good. Um, but nevertheless, 1-1 it was. Um, it's a Mill on Sunderland play out eventful draw at the Den. Indeed, a lot of events, some good, some bad. The Mill on Sunderland. Drew 1-1 at the Den in the Sky Bay Championship on Saturday afternoon. Jake Cooper gave the Lions a second half lead in an eventful tie in the C16. Played in front of the third largest attendance in the stadium's history. Hey! The substitute Dennis Serkin equalised on 81 minutes to ensure that the points would be shared. Charlie Cresswell deputised for the injured Sean Hutchinson against the Black Cats, whilst new signing duo Oliver Burke and Dungle Watmore took places on the substitute's bench. After the Memorial Day commemorations were completed, the game got underway, surrounded by a large and frantic crowd in SC16. And the first big talking point came with four minutes on the clock. But after Tom Bradshaw fell inside the penalty area, referee Thomas Brammel waved away the line's appeals. Uh, Mason Bennett then struck wide after a good work from former Sunderland man George Honeyman, uh, whilst Trey Hume had the Macklem's first attempt of the afternoon, but his strike was blocked by the middle defence. Zion Fleming then found his shot well saved by Anthony Patterson, as the action continued shortly before the half-hour mark. Before the Lions had the ball in the net on 29 minutes, but Honeyman was judged to be in an offside position by an extremely late flag as he turned a rebound home in close range. Well, actually, we're not too sure who the hell was offside. Uh, apparently, it was supposed to be Jules Shavel, but nobody knows. I mean, it was an absolute joke of a decision. Uh, the last chance of a tight first half saw Crystal hit one over the crossbar from inside the penalty area. Uh, Bennett, who suffered an injury and had to be stretched off as half time whistle blew, was replaced by Watmore for his Lions debut as the second half got underway before the first chance of the restart came by the head of Murray Wallace, who nodded onto the top of the crossbar and behind. Neat football from the Lions then allowed Honeyman. Uh, an effort on goal on 59 minutes, but Patson was able to stretch to tip his attempt wide of the post. From the resulting corner kick, however, the deadlock was finally broken as a scramble saw the ball find its way to Cooper, who showed cleverness to scoop an effort towards goal, uh, which looped beyond everyone and nestled into the net of the far post. Yes, Cooper, who was prostrate at the time, he was laying backwards on the ground, because, you know, that's, that's how uh, they deal with him now. They drag him down. In the penalty area, and obviously, no penalty given. Like, oh, yeah, well, you're the big man, of course, they're going to climb all over you and jump all over you and drag you down. Like, deal with it. Come on, man. And he's on the floor, and he just like whacks his leg at the ball while he's laying down. And it goes, it loops into the far corner. Like, fantastic stuff. But I mean, how many times are they going to just let them do this? This is football. It's not WWE. It's not worldwide wrestling. What are we doing here, man? Patrick Roberts' start through the middle calls mill problems as Sunderland looked for an equaliser, with George Long then having to beat away a dangerous cross in 73 minutes. Uh, George Savile struck wide as another possible penalty shout went awry, with Cooper being pulled to the ground uh, following that. Uh, before what, what more stole back possession and sent Bradshaw in on goal, only for the Sunderland defence to recover and usher the ball to safety. It was just nine minutes to play, however, when the Black Cats were able to lever it as a free kick was bravely turned home by the head of Sirkin off the post. From there, both sides broke for a winner, but were made to settle for a draw, extending Mills' unbeaten uh, run at home in the league to nine matches. Uh, the Mill team was as follows Long, Cresswell, McNamara, Cooper, Wallace, Honeyman. Uh, Bennett, Fleming, Mitchell, Savile, Bradshaw. The substitutions of Volsammer on for Honeyman on the 84th minute. What more on for Bennett on the uh, half time 46 minute. Uh, Burke on for Bradshaw on the 84th minute. And the subs unused were Malone, Shackleton, Leonard, and Biakowski. Um. Could the subs have been made earlier? I mean, 84 minutes, what are you waiting for? Now, 
they're quite attacking subs, subs actually. And they were made, but they were made three minutes after they were scored. So maybe he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Because he's going to put on an extra defender. He's going to change the formation. He's going to bring Leonard on and just shore it up. And then once they score, it's too late. You've got to bring on the extra attackers. So that's probably what he's waiting for. Is to make defensive subs. And then they score and it's too late. And three minutes later, he's got to bring on attackers. But it's too, it's too late by then. Uh, Mill book, bookings with Cooper, Bennett and Savile. And they had one booking, which was who you. And the crowd was 18,524. Uh, with 2,813 away fans. And... What can you say? Um, I think Mill were just a better team. Certainly, we didn't dominate them. We didn't blow them away. We weren't outstanding. Um, but we were better than them, I think. And so we had a lot more chances, and we, we managed to stop them from having too many chances. But the, this referee, I mean, it's what what is this referee doing? And you can point at all oh, the offside, the goal, disallowed goal offside. That wasn't the only thing. There's things all over the pitch that he's getting on. Um, just absolute disaster of a referee. Um, yeah, I just think he couldn't handle he couldn't handle all the noise. He couldn't handle all the crowd. What can you do? Um, probably should have won that game. Should have won that game. Should have had a penalty. And. Uh, he, on this picture here, this is the goal. Look, look, look at Cooper. He's on the floor. They've dragged him down to the ground. And he's kicked the ball and it's going towards goal. And this is They do this every time now, every team. If it happened in outside of the area, it would be a free kick. Because it's in the, in the penalty area and they haven't got the bollocks to just give it as a penalty. Do it once and then they won't, you won't have to give 10 penalties a game. As soon as you give the first one, They'll stop doing it. It's absolutely disgusting that they keep letting up teams do this to Cooper. Absolutely disgusting. Um, so let's talk about that. Gary Rowett here having a having a word. Um, so this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, South London Press's online website. Uh, very contentious. Mill will boss on the two big calls that win against his side in one-one draw against Sunderland. Uh, Mill manager Gary Rout thought he saw on the wrong end of the official's decision on at least two key moments in today's 1-1 draw against Sunderland. Uh, the Lions chief was left unhappy that Tom Bradshaw did not win a penalty in the first half as he looked to have been impeded inside the penalty area. And referee Thomas Brammel also disallowed George Honeyman's goal on the half-hour mark. Uh, the former Black Hats midfielder turned in from close range after Sunderland keeper Anthony Patson spilled Zara Fleming's shot, but the assistant referee flagged, claiming an offside uh, George Savile was in, impeding Patterson. Well, he didn't flag, did he? He didn't flag because the referee went over to him, had a word, and then made him put his, made him put his flag up. And I absolutely, this is another thing I absolutely hate. Why are the linesmen there? Why are they there? I'm not calling them assistant referees, they're linesmen. Why are they there? They should be running the line and making the decisions themselves. I hate it when you've got a, a referee in the middle who's Billy Big Spuds and he tells them, I'm going to tell you when to put your flag up. I'm going to tell you when to do this. I'm going to tell you when to do this. You don't act independently. I'm going to make the decisions and you just stick your flag up. I hate referees when they do that. Let the lines make, make his decision. And if you overrule it, you overrule it. Fair enough. You say, no, I didn't see that. Because this, at the end of the day, it is your decision. But I hate it when they tell them, I'm, I'm in charge here. You, 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 you can see that these people, that they're like control freaks or just narcissists, whatever the hell is going on. It's like, oh, no, no, you're not going to say where, where, uh, which way it goes. And then you get these linesmen. They... They don't even decide which way the throwing has gone. They stand there and then they look at the referee. And they, he tells them which way. Uh, oh, the throwing's for them. The throwing's for that team. And then the, the linesman puts his flag up. 
That is an absolute disgrace that that happens at any level. Because why are the linesmen there? Let the linesmen say, oh, I thought it was that way. And then the referee could say, uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I thought it, 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 that team touched it last. It's the other way. Um, stick your flag. Change. change. Don't, um, you're, you're showing it for that team. Can you change your flag and show it for the other way? But what's wrong with that? I absolutely hate this style of refereeing. It's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> Um, Jake Cooper hooked Mill ahead in the 59th minute, improvising well to hook in while down on the turf with Honeyman's corner not cleared. But Sunderland leveled through substitute Dennis Serkin with nine minutes of normal time remaining. He met Alex Pritchard's uh, free kick before the onrushing George Long. And that's another thing that people uh, like George Long. Um, I think apparently, like Sunderland had two shots on target. So that doesn't look good. Like they had two shots on target and they've got one goal. That doesn't look good if you're the goalkeeper. Um, like if you if you come out for that, you got to get it. If not, just stay on your line. Trust your defenders. We got Cooper. We got Cresswell. We we got Murray Wallace. We got players who can win headers. Like Hutch is not there, okay. But you either trust them or you don't trust them. And if you're gonna come out, come out and get the ball. Uh, Mill extended their unbeaten run in the championship by the Denton Mining matches. Uh, if you're a neutral boy, stand out was competitive, enjoying game with both teams more than played their part, said Rowett. If you view the game on position, some really nice little touches and skill, but then some of them more than played the part in. They had a 10 minute spell first half and probably a 10 minute spell second half where they make it difficult for you to get on the ball, but I didn't think they threatened our goal that much. Uh, Long has not had to save to make, they had one shot on target, the goal. Uh, we've had something like 15 shots and lots and lots of moments where we were very contentious. Uh, I've, I've watched them back, so I'm not just sat here bleating as a manager who hasn't won the game. Yeah, we had a... You notice he didn't. He doesn't tell us how many shots we had on target. Because I'm pretty sure he's not going to be anywhere near 15. Uh, I think it's something like 4 or 5, but... But that just goes to show, like, it's disappointing that we didn't win that game. Because we were the better team. We should have had a penalty in the first half when Tom Bradshaw gets the other side of the fullback. And the fullback pulls him and then pushes him in the back. The referees need to be sure, he said. Uh, I didn't feel there was quite enough contact to be a penalty. So he wasn't sure. But the second one, uh, Honeyman's goal, is absolutely sure. You can't guess. If you watch it back when Savile is in and around the area. But he's quite away from the keeper. And when Zion strikes the ball, it doesn't affect the goalkeeper at all. He dies straight away. He knows where it's, where it's going. He fumbles the chance and then he doesn't appeal to it at all. Usually that's a good guideline. If I'm the keeper, I'm getting up there and I'm saying he's in my way. They think it's a goal. They don't appeal. The officials chopped it off. After that, the keepers made two or three good saves and we've hit the bar. We're a little bit unfortunate not to win the game. Yeah, he's making a good point there. Like, the keepers... Sunderland keeper that wasn't complaining. They just randomly thought, "Ah, oh, I'm gonna let's uh, let's let's find a way of taking this goal away from Millwall." Oh, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Yeah, what can you do? Um, shit, refereeing. That's how it goes. Some would say it's a conspiracy because Mule actually in with a chance of getting promoted, of getting in the playoffs, of having a chance. And they don't want to take that chance because once you get in the playoffs, you could say, well, they'll let you get in the playoffs, they'll let you get to the playoff final, and then now. Then they'll uh, then they'll fix it, but that's, that that'll be too blatant. They got to stop you in the tracks, like to stop you from getting there. Uh, here we go again from London News Online. Uh, incredible atmosphere. Gary out on Mill's biggest den attendance since 1995. 
Um, Millwall manager Gary Rowell would love to see the Den packed for the rafters again after today's capacity crowd for their 1-1 draw against Sunderland. An attendance of 18,524 turned up for the championship match, the line's biggest turnout since 1995. It was an incredible atmosphere, said Rowett. Our fans, when they packed us out, it's a very unique atmosphere. They really helped the game. It was a really good game. This is what you want to play in front of to turn up and play in our stadium. We have another three or 4,000 fans there. And the big away for them was incredible. Uh, for us, if I'm being really greedy, in an idle world, I want that every week. Because it makes such a difference. Our atmosphere is always good. It's just there was a little bit of extra when you went out. It was one of those games where you could sense it was going to be a pleasure to be on the side of the pitch. It's just a shame. I'm sure me, Adam and Robbo would have loved to have been on the pitch because it was, it was that type of game and atmosphere. I appreciate our fans' efforts and I think they've gone away seeing their team giving everything they could to try and win the game. Sunderland manager Tony Mowbray said, The environment created from the terraces is a unique place to play football. Credit them. We had an extraordinary young team out there and they stood up to the environment and set a game from the opposition. It's a good learning experience. I forgot what he sounds like, so... Yeah, apparently, so... I've looked it up. They're saying it's, it's our biggest crowd. They said since 1995, but they didn't tell us the game. So I've had to look on millhistory.org.uk. Uh, millhistory and I believe they're talking about... Uh, so this game here... Well, it doesn't come up, okay. Can I get it to? No, I can't, okay. So if you go down uh, halfway, and there's two FA Cup games back to back, the one against Arsenal and then the one against Chelsea. Um, the Arsenal game was away, and the Chelsea game was at home at the Den. It was a nil nil, and we had uh, eighteen thousand five hundred and seventy three. So that was an FA Cup game. That's not even a league game. So can you compare it? Like, um, I'm not too sure actually. I don't think it's not like for like, is it? It's an FA Cup game against a Premiership team. Um, yeah, Premiership was going at that time in 1995, so uh, it was a nil nil. So there you go, similar. How many of those games have we actually won? We've had a big crowd at home. Have there been many? Obviously, you got. Would the Liverpool Cup game be up there? We've got Liverpool in the. Was it the third round of the League Cup? When we had. I think we were playing Ferrans Varus that year. So we got a buy to the third round of the League Cup. And we got uh, Rafa Benitez's uh, Liverpool. And I remember that was quite packed out. Um, but I don't know. So. Let's have a look at what's what the fallout from that game, where we are now. So these are the results from uh, this round of games. Luton played one of their games in hand on Tuesday. We narrowly beat Cardiff 1-0. Um, <clears throat> in terms of playoff picture, we got West Brom beating Coventry 1-0. We got Norwich losing at home to Burnley 3-0. Um, we got Sheffield United drawing to Rotherham. I actually fancied Rotherham to win that game. Um, it was about 5-1 to one for Rotherham to win. So that did not surprise me. A lot of, um, what, uh, what do they call it? Um, a lot of Cuban busters today. Everton beat Arsenal. Uh, Wolves beat Liverpool. But I thought Rotherham could have a chance against Sheffield United. Um, other teams, who have we got on there? We've got Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough smashed Blackpool 3-0. That's no surprise. Um, Luton beat Stoke 1-0. And Reading and Watford played out a 2-2 draw. So, interesting stuff. And what that does to the table and where that leaves us is we actually go up. We go up a place or two. No, we go up a place um, to 7th. And Sunderland stay where they are. But Blackburn, the team that I've long suspected are a bit suspect with their 13 defeats, which is absolutely crazy, but they, they've won 14. 
and they never draw, uh, they finally dropped out of the playoff places. And they're now in 8th place between us and Sunderland. So Norwich are down in 10th after their whacking. So they, we, we've, we've uh, lost only 9 games and Norwich have lost more than us. Which is not bad, isn't it? It's not bad. You would, you wouldn't have said that at the start of the season. Norwich, everyone thought, oh, Norwich are a yo-yo team, so they're going to yo and yo. Well, they're not yoing right now, are they? They are not yoing. But yeah, we're still with seventh after that one-one draw. Again, another one-one draw at home. A game we should have won, similar to the Wigan game. Wigan game, whole game. These home draws, I'm, I don't like it. It's not really what we're doing. Like we should have should have won those games. We should have had. So that would have been an extra six more points. But we're in a situation now. We've got the games in hand. But again, our games in hand are away at Luton, who are fourth, and at home to Burnley. Who are first, but it's in our home hands at the moment because we do have games in hand. We've got a game in hand on West Brom. We've got two games in hand at Watford. Two games in hand on Middlesbrough. So that means we're in a situation where if we can pick up points in those games in hand, we get ourselves into the playoff places, and we don't have to rely on the results of anyone else, which is what we had to do. At the end of um, end of last season, we were seventh. We needed to beat Bournemouth, which was crazy because they were at the top of the table. And then we needed other results to go our way. Well, we want to be in a situation where when we get to the end of the season, we're either firmly in the playoffs or we're in a situation where it's in our own hands. We don't want to have to rely on the kindness of strangers. Um, so, yeah. So next up is what, QPR away. They fell off a bit. Uh, Lyndon Dykes, who they will slag off. They're struggling without him. They haven't won in a while. Look. But they draw. We certainly don't want another draw. Um, yeah, but they haven't been winning games. So they did lose at home to Luton. But that is a game. That is a winnable game. And it would be nice if we could win it. But yeah, that's where we are now. We've gone up a place. We're in 7th on 43 points. And um, there we are. Um, finishing up today, we got this from southernnews.co.uk. The injuries, obviously. Bit of a shocker when the team came out. There's no much to see. Uh, injured. Cresswell came in. Thought Cresswell did, did pretty well. Done all right. Can he can he do it again next week? We will see. Hopefully he can. Hopefully he's figured it out. Um, and we'll see what we can do. But Mason Bennett as well. That Mason Bennett again. He's always getting injured. I mean, maybe this is this this um. Football business isn't for him. Maybe he should uh, give it up and maybe become a crash test dummy or something. I mean, absolutely disastrous for him. Uh, Mill boss provides update as duo suffer serious injuries. Garrett is expecting to hear that Mason Bent has broken his ankle after he was stretched off in Mill's 1-1 draw against Sunderland. The forward went down shortly before, before the half-time break and required oxygen while he was treated on the pitch. He was brought off to a standing ovation from the fans at the den and taken away in an ambulance uh, with some fearing that he may be ruled out for the rest of the season. He got stretched off. I think he was still out there at half time, Rout said after the game. If I had to guess, I'd probably say it was a break, but I don't know. The only reason I'd say that is because he rolled his ankle really quickly and the physio said he was in a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain. Usually that suggests that there's some very serious, but again, I'm surmising. Of what happened, but I don't know yet. 
Um, yeah, UG is something like that. I mean, Achilles, it might be, but I think if your Achilles snaps, you hear it and kind of your leg doesn't work. So it's not like you can't move your leg, it just your leg stops working properly. So, and like, apparently, Achilles is very painful as well. So maybe it might be that, but then again, that's a long time, that's probably longer than a broken bone, actually. Uh, Achilles tendon. Um, hopefully Sirkin is alright too because he got clobbered for George Long for the goal which is brave hopefully he's not too serious as well yeah fair plays of that um, the Lions were also without captain Sean Hutchin who has missed a number of games this season for injury Rout confirmed that the captain pulled up in training after feeling a pain in his groin and is set to miss the next few weeks while he recovers it just seems to be us at the moment where we can't quite find that momentum with a team. We put two players into help strengthen the squad and we lose our captain and Benno within days, which is pretty much par for the course with us. Par. P-A-R. Par. It means the standard practice. The modus operandi. Not par for the course. Uh, it's really frustrating. I don't know how serious it is, but I think it'll be a matter of weeks rather than days. It's his groin. I don't exactly know the correct terminology for it, but it's his groin. He felt it in training and that was him ruled out. What I would say is that I thought Charlie Cresswell played really well today. I think it was a big game for him to come back into. He might have felt like he really needed a big performance, which puts a bit of added pressure on the young player, but I thought he coped with it really well. It was excellent today. Here, here, yeah, he was. Fair play to him. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.